Hi. About three years ago, I made a video called My Busking Setup, which was really just for my subscribers to see kind of how I set up my busking equipment and how I loaded it onto the back of my bike. And it was kind of just like a silly little video that I didn't expect anyone to watch. And it got about 50,000 views, which for me is a lot. And I had a lot of people in the comments asking me really specific questions about my setup and how I um, connected my battery to my inverter, etc. And there were just things I didn't answer in the video because I didn't think they were interesting. And more and more I get the same questions in the comments of that video and I've been saying for ages that I'm going to do an update and try and explain how I actually do that. And just kind of give a bit of an update because it's been three years and so my busking setup has massively changed and there have been a lot of updates and new things on the market that meant that I do things totally differently. So this video is a really technical one and it's really um, more for the people who are coming to my channel to find out about busking. So uh, if you're here for the music, I'm just going to be talking this video. So if that is of no interest to you, feel free to click away now. But otherwise, I'm going to carry on with a very technical and equipment focused Chatty Wednesdays with me. The most frequently asked question in my busking setup video was about the inverter. I got my previous inverter from Maplins, which is a UK based store, which is now shut down. So I cry because I loved my plans. Um, so I got this inverter off Amazon. Um, I'm now an Amazon affiliate, so there is an Amazon affiliate link if you are interested in getting the same inverter. I do recommend it. I actually have it twice, which I'll explain why in a minute. So what I use to power my Bose L1 compact PA system, which I use for busking, is an inverter and a golf buggy battery. This is the golf buggy battery and this is the inverter. Most inverters that you get come with crocodile clips, but these batteries and a lot of other lithium based batteries come with a T bar. So they come with a bar like this that you connect to your battery like this. Ta -da! But unfortunately, the inverter doesn't come with a T bar connected, it comes with crocodile clips it's like these. So the black and red connect to two crocodile clips. For someone like me who is not technical at all, it sounds really scary, but to anyone who has any knowledge of uh, wiring, it's a pretty simple job. You take the crocodile clips and you cut the clips off the end. So you don't need these, cut them off. And you also need to cut the end off the T-bar. So you cut the end off the T-bar, you cut the end off the crocodile clips, and what you'll have is the exposed wires from the crocodile clips and the T-bar. And all you need to do is connect the red and the red and the black and the black. If you have the option to solder it, I would highly recommend. When I made that video in 2017, all I had done was cut these open, connect them together, and then tape it back up again, and it worked great. But I had a couple of occasions where I needed to give the gaffer tape a bit of a squeeze because some of the wires had come loose inside. And so I didn't know what to do about it. I wasn't technically minded enough to really know how to fix it. And uh, this guy that used to come and see me on the South Bank every day said, will you let me take it away and bring it back tomorrow? And he did, and he'd soldered them together and retaped it for me. So in a lot of ways, I'm, I didn't really do it, <laughs> but I did do the initial work. So if you can solder it, that's gonna make it last a lot longer. And there you have an inverter that fixed a lithium battery. The aforementioned problem that I was having where things kept cutting out I was worried that the issue was with my battery so I ended up buying myself a second backup battery only to discover that the problem was with my inverter. This is actually the original battery that I talk about in that video. Um, it's a lot more beaten up now <laughs> but this gives me the opportunity to show you another way that you can convert your battery and your inverter to make them fit together. Okay so if you'd rather use the crocodile clips that come with the inverter you can and a lot of a lot of performers and buskers that I see have the crocodile clip option where they just clip it on. And in that sense, if you're ever needing to borrow or share equipment, then um, if you want to, your equipment to be compatible with a lot of other buskers and performers, then this might be a better option for you. So I'm just gonna talk you through it. These are two batteries. This is a newer one, this is an older one. The battery comes like this with a piece of plastic over the top of these two metal uh, screws. And obviously that's where this T-bar goes in. So if you remove the black and the red, if you get like a pliers and pull these off, you'll see the exposed screws underneath and if you unscrew them then this piece of black plastic comes off and you can screw the screws back in they are the conductors down to the battery so when you have the exposed screws like this with no plastic on the top then you can connect the crocodile clips directly to these instead of having to do anything to your inverter you've just adapted the battery to fit 
the inverter. So you can either adapt your inverter to fit your battery or you can adapt your battery to fit your inverter. I've got links to the battery that I use for busking. I use it to power a Bose L1 compact PA system and the battery tends to last about four to five hours. Obviously I have two batteries so if I need to do more than that I can swap them over but I wouldn't normally be doing more than that in one day if I'm honest. I also have links to the inverter that I use in the description below and they are Amazon affiliate links so you're not charged extra but I do get a little something just to let you know that. Another comment that I've been getting a lot recently is um, why are you using a Bose L1 PA system when Bose have a portable busking amp? <laughs> and that is a great question. The Bose S1 busking PA system that has uh, been released by Bose did not exist in 2017 or as far as I knew it did not exist. But to answer your question, I now use <laughs> the Bose S1 PA system, um, which is a lot more compact than the L1. It has uh, built-in EQ and reverb. It's a really, really great amp, and if anyone was looking for a starter busking amp, it's quite expensive for a starter amp. <laughs> I actually would recommend for most people starting to get the Street Cube, but if you have the budget to spare and you want high quality sound, this is gonna be an amp that solves all of your problems. As you can see, I'm lifting up here just like to show you it and it's very light um, or I'm very strong, I don't know. Uh, easy to carry around, it's much smaller than a lot of other busking amps. Um, and uh, yeah, it's got a little handle in the top so you can just carry it, which I quite like. You can have it lots of different angles, you can put it on the side. And one of my favorite features is if you decide to uh, put the amp on its side um, and, uh, and have it almost more like a sort of street cube style, the uh, the logo flips oh yeah uh, and that's pretty much all i had to say really i hope you found this video useful if not useful then entertaining in some way or intriguing or interesting in the sort of ins and outs of busking and the unexpected technical aspects of it uh, good luck out there heavy hats as we like to say <laughs> bye